I'm Cameron Hall. The News Nation is following reaction to Romney's return. Bitterness and regret, just some of the words being used today to describe Mitt Romney and Ann Romney's first sit down interview since the election defeat. And that's from within their own party. Here was Nicole Wallace, former senior advisor to John McCain's campaign, earlier today on Morning Joe. Whenever you come out and 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 talk about what went wrong, um, there there's just the, it sort of reeks of the bitterness and, and the regret, and it's it's hard to watch. I also remember watching the interview was you know in grad school and thinking, uh, you know that's not the future of the Republican Party, and I kind of had I must say, with all due respect to Governor Romney, I, I sort of had that feeling watching him today too. That of course, Bill Crystal of the Weekly Standard on Fox News yesterday, and as our first read team says, the Romneys made it clear through their words and tone in that Fox interview that they have not moved on from their loss. Yeah, I look at what's happening right now. I wish I were there. It kills me not to be there, not to be in the White House doing what needs to be done. That was that crushing disappointment. Not for us. Our lives are going to be fine. It's for the country. Romney lingering on even as his party attempts to move forward, rebuild, rebrand. The past and future collided, though, today in some ways for the GOP. Romney's sit-down interview came just a day before 2016 prospect Jeb Bush round made the rounds on morning shows in which Bush spoke about where Romney went wrong. Governor Romney put himself in a box, I think, in the primary by trying to out conservative some very good conservative candidates and um, never really recovered from it. And joining me now is Jonathan Collegio, Director of Communications for American Crossroads and former Press Secretary for the National Republican Congressional Committee, Danny Vargas. Thank you both for joining us. Thank you, Cameron. Jonathan, I'll Hi, start Cameron. off with you. What was your gut reaction to the interview? I mean, Bill Crystal says that, in a sense, Romney was yesterday. What do you think? I thought there were kind of two interviews. The first part was uh, was the governor and Ann Romney looking back at what happened. Uh, I, I kind of got a little bit bored with that. Looking forward was, I thought, a little bit more interesting. But at the same time, Romney isn't the head of the party anymore, so I don't know how relevant it was to the future. It's definitely I mean, it, there is a history of, of, of uh, losing presidential candidates kind of doing the post-mortem on their campaigns after the election, and that's what we saw yesterday. Well, you know, he's not the head of the party, but he's invited to CPAC. We know that. At a time when the guy who was referred to as the boss on Time magazine, Chris Christie, he's still waiting on his invitation. So, Jonathan, uh, maybe some members of your party believe that Romney is still a part of the puzzle for the future. Well, he definitely will have some interesting things to say about the campaign and what went wrong. And what we saw was that in just about every way, the Obama campaign was more robust than the Romney campaign. So I think that there is a lot to the debate that he can contribute about as to what went wrong, and maybe he might have some well, pointers. Okay, give me, uh, some, as give me a specific here. Uh, and let me, before you answer that, let me play what Governor Romney said regarding minorities and how uh, the minority vote factored into his loss. Let's play it. I lost. And so I'm not going to be telling the Republican Party, come listen to me. The guy who lost is going to tell yeah, you, you how to win. You must have but, some ideas. But, but, of course. But, but among those ideas, clearly, we have to do a better job bringing minority voters in to vote for... Uh, Danny, bringing in minority voters, but he didn't say how. And certainly we know it's not by implying that people voted for the president because they wanted free health care or something along the lines of the 47% comment, which he still is not clearly explained. Well, that's right. And I, I think, you know, frankly, this interview was not newsworthy, uh, in my personal opinion. Uh, I thought it was interesting to see that he was able to admit that, you know, a big part of him losing the, uh, the race was the fact that he wasn't able to, to bring on minority voters, Latinos and Asians and blacks, in, in numbers that made a difference. Uh, I think the important thing is to note that, as I agree with you, it wasn't about being able to offer them goodies, as, as he described it, that the Obama campaign was able to attract those voters. In 1984, Ronald Reagan won 49 of 50 states, not by offering gifts giveaways but being able to be, uh, offer a, a vision that was hopeful and, and optimistic about the future. That's what we need to be able to get back to. As a Republican Party, we do better when we speak to people's hopes and dreams and aspirations, not their fears and desperations. I think if that's what we've done over the last six or seven yeah. years. I think we need to get back to basics and talk about the things, the values and core principles of the party that do resonate with but, folks. But so much of what happened in the campaign still affects the Republican Party from immigration. Danny, right now you have a, a great number of those within your party who had the wake-up moment and who are looking for some kind of comprehensive, perhaps even a great bipartisan plan uh, right. that would include securing the borders as well as a path to citizenship. But back to the inclusion or the issue of whether not the party's one that is inclusive or it wants to be exclusive. Let me play what Romney said regarding 47%. 
I didn't express myself as I, I wished I would have. Uh, you know, when you speak in private, uh, you don't spend as much time thinking about how something could be twisted and distorted and, and could come out wrong and be used. But, you know, I did, and it was very harmful. What I said is not what I believe. So, Jonathan, what confuses me about what you, your reaction to uh, Mr. Romney's interview, you point out he's not the leader of the party, but he still could have good things to say at CPAC, where you have many conservatives there waiting, I guess, for some kind of direction, some type of leadership. He's on the roster for a reason, and he still can't quite explain that 47% comment, and I do not believe that that will exclusively haunt Governor Romney, I believe it's haunting for the party for many people who've come on and not been able to at least explain or justify what he was thinking. Well, specifically with min with, with minority outreach, I, I agree with Danny. I mean, but I, I think that I think that immigration reform, specifically a legislative approach, is part of it. But I think as Republicans, we also need to show up more. We need to go to more local events, and I think that that's something that has to happen from the bottom up. I think it would be interesting. I, mean, I don't know what he's going to be talking about at the CPAC conference. Right. Well, it could be a postmortem of the campaign, yeah. but we don't know yet. But I think that I, th I do think that there are things that we can learn. If from it's it. a post mortem of the campaign, you learn nothing. I mean, he's kind of made this big interview, and as you said, it really didn't uh, give you any major headlines other than the Washington Post, which said, Ann Romney needs to move on. But with that said, Jonathan, if you had a choice to invite Chris Christie or a Mitt Romney to your big conference, your conservative crossroads conference, who would you pick? If oh, you're I mean, moving forward. I, 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 would, I would expect that, uh, that Chris Christie would be invited there. I think he's spoken there in the past. Uh, and, and, and of course, you know, as one of the great governors, we have a lot of great things that are happening at the state with yeah. Republican governors. Uh, Chris Christie first among those. Yeah, let me play real quick also, um, Danny. I want you to get your thoughts on Ann Romney and, and this back and forth with the media and why go there. Let me play it. What about the media? <laughs> I'm happy to blame the media. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think the media was in the tank for Barack Obama? <laughs> I think that it's any time you're running for office, you always think that you're being portrayed unfairly. And, you know, we, of course, on our side, believe that there's more bias um, in favor of the other side. I think that, you know, that's a pretty universal, universally felt um, opinion. Danny, is that what you feel? I mean, she didn't have to answer the question. She could say, I want to move on and talk about our role. She took the bait for right or for wrong. But what's your she, gut on that? She did take the bait. She and took I, it. I, I would like I'd like to be able to blame the media for everything too. I mean, but you deal with you deal with the media. You deal with the you media that you have. You either blame your parents for being poor parents or blame the media for how you turn yeah, out. But, Nevertheless, she took that the, bait from Chris but, Wallace. But the reality is that you deal with the media that you have, not the media that you wish yeah. you had, right? So I think what we have right now as a party is a, is a perception problem. I think too many segments of the electorate view us as intractable, intolerant, and sensitive. It's up to us to be able to change that narrative. And we need and that, that perception problem is made up of, of policies mm -hmm. plus plus principles plus politics. I think our principles are good and solid. I think our policies, I think we, we have a lot to learn from, from various communities in terms of how we shape our policies so that they do make sense, so that they don't appear harsh. And our politics, I think our politics have been disastrous with, with too many segments of, of, the, of the population. I think we can work on that. Those things are fixable if we get back to our core values and principles. But I think, unfortunately, too many times we've had tone and, and tenor and rhetoric that's been divisive, and we need to get away from that, and we need to get back to talking about things that really are aspirational and, and optimistic for, for segments of the population that are looking for a viable National Republican Party that has a different alternative uh, than, than what the Democrats are offering. John, Danny Vargas, Jonathan Collegio, thank you both for joining me. I greatly appreciate thank it. You. And Governor Romney also said the sequester would not